How's it going guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros and I'm here with another computer hardware guide. And in the last episode, I went over graphics cards. It basically explained what kind of price range you should be looking for with graphics cards and what exactly entails when you're shopping around for either an upgrade or basically a new build overall. And in this video, as I hinted in the last one, I'm going to be going over CPUs. And specifically, I'm going to be discussing the idea of bottlenecking because it's a very misconstrued idea on the internet. And a lot of new people getting into PC gaming really just don't understand what bottlenecking means. And it's really not that complicated. So let's roll that intro. Alright guys, so let's kick things off here with what is a CPU? A CPU is basically the central processing unit, the main brains of your computer. It comes in two different variations. Nowadays, the main manufacturers are Intel and AMD. That's really the only kind of CPUs in the PC market, but if you go outside the PC market, there's a lot of different processors from Samsung and let's see, we got... Uh, Quickcom and all the, there's a bunch of different manufacturers out there for cell phones and tablets and all that sort of thing But in this video, we're mainly focused on the CPU for a PC So CPUs there's a lot of misconception when it comes to when you're buying a CPU Everyone says to go pick up the i7 the latest i7 the i7 6700k for example is the latest high-end i7 It's about a 350 400 dollar CPU now, that CPU is great for gaming and video editing. However, that CPU is not what you automatically have to go pick up. This CPU is for a specific use case scenario. This CPU is enthusiast grade. It's the high end of the high end, and it's the kind of CPU that a lot of people want to pick up when they want a balls of the wall system. Not some system when they're just trying to jump into gaming. In all honesty, when I think of a CPU for people who are getting into gaming, I recommend the 860K from AMD, which is a, I think around $70 CPU. It's a quad core AMD CPU. There's not a whole lot of upgrade path for this CPU. However, it is a CPU that you can jump right in and play games really well. I've seen a lot of people actually do builds with the 860K and the 390, which is a decent combination. There might be a slight bottleneck with that CPU, honestly. I've heard some things, I haven't really done research on it, but there might be a possibility of a bottleneck because that is a lower end CPU. Um, but you know, that kind of transitions in well to what I was gonna talk about, which is bottlenecking. Bottlenecking is when one component in your system is putting out information so fast that the other one has to keep up with it. So let's say you spend 20 bucks on some cheapo used dual core CPU, which is a prime example in our uh, secondhand PC build. There's a prime example of bottlenecking in that system. We have the CPU here, which is an old dual core, and then we have the graphics card, which is basically, let's just say a 970 or a 980. That GPU is a workhorse. Like it's gonna put out all the performance it needs to, but it's gonna be limited by the CPU being able to keep up with it. So basically think of bottlenecking in the terms of, as like a funnel. You have a giant funnel and when you pour water down through it, it's all dependent on that little other piece. It's dependent on the lowest piece of the whole equation. So when you pour through a, a funnel, you'll get in there, but you're limited by that nozzle that's inside the funnel. You have the big opening where you can get as much as you want in, but it's going to slow down just based on that small little the little stick that goes down into wherever you're trying to pour it. So yes, that is a good example of bottlenecking and that does occur in PCs. So bottlenecking, I would say the best like word of advice, and there was actually a comment in the last video, I'll probably put it right here like for an example. He said a wise guy once told him that the best way is to spend nearly as much as you spend on your GPU on your CPU and maybe just a little bit more on your GPU, which is actually pretty good advice. It does limit bottlenecking, even though the pricing variation is kind of different on GPUs versus CPUs. It's actually a smart idea to do so. So basically, if you're picking up, let's say, a 970 or a 980, it's a good idea to probably pick up like a 4690K processor, like an i5 or so at the same price range, because that will allow the, CIS, the CPU and the GPU to work as a unison. It will not be reliant on one another for more than it needs to, and everything will flow just nicely. And that's what you want in your system. It's everything just to flow nicely. And yes, bottlenecks occur in more than just your GPU and CPU. Your RAM could be an issue. You could have a power supply issue where you're not getting enough wattage. 
uh, your hard drive could be the bottleneck between an SSD and everything slowing down. There's a lot of things that contribute to bottlenecks. And CPU is just one that a lot of people contribute to it because you can get CPUs relatively cheap and a lot of people just think for a gaming PC, you just need a CPU that works and you need a GPU, but that's definitely not the case. You could get a GTX Titan and run some old dual core CPU and you're gonna struggle and your GPU is not gonna perform the way it needs to. So, on to my decision, uh, basically my rationale to what I think you should do for a system. It call, all comes back to the price to the performance ratio. Price to performance is the key to where you're spending the right amount of money for the amount of performance you're getting. There's a point in no return. When you're spending on a system that's like a 5960X and a Titan X, you're basically spending so much money, you're not getting a good price to performance or FPS per dollar. Linus Tech Tips is known a lot for doing this. He really, really harps on the idea of price performance, FPS per performance, so you're getting the most for your money. So if you want something that's price to performance for a CPU, I highly recommend the kind of the same price range as the GPU price to performance ratio. About $100 to about $250 is about the point of no return. Uh, around that range is where I would recommend. It's kind of a vast range because there's a lot of CPUs you can get. But you also have to consider the fact that there is a thing called upgrade path. An upgrade path. Basically, in simpler terms, if I was to pick up an 860K, that socket type, I think it's FM2+. Plus. I'm a, I think it's FM2+. Plus. Don't quote me on that. I'm kind of quoting this off the top of my head here. But on FM2+, Plus, you can only go so high without having to replace your motherboard to be able to put a higher-end CPU because that higher-end CPU that comes out doesn't support that socket type. For example, if you got the 860K in hopes to upgrade to the new Zen architecture that comes out, there may be a new socket type that comes with it, which is most likely for like the AM4 socket that's probably gonna come out with Zen, and maybe a higher end FM2, like FM3 or something that may come out, but you won't be able to put a new CPU into the socket that you already have because you're pretty much maxed out with what you got, which is good, is kind of a mixed bag because you're getting a lot of performance right now, but down the road when you wanna upgrade, you can't just pay for a new CPU. You have to pay for a new motherboard as well, which is another total cost. And even now with the switch over to DDR4, that's a whole nother cost you have to do. You have to pick up DDR4 RAM along with your CPU and the motherboard, which makes upgrading a lot more difficult than it needs to be. So the main thing is, if you really want an upgrade path, I recommend, honestly, the Pentium G3258, which, yes, is a dual-core processor. You can pick it up um, around, like, 80 bucks, same price as the 860K. But the reasons I would recommend that over the 860K is because, in all honesty, if you want to upgrade, you have a large upgrade path. You could upgrade to the i3 if you want to, which wouldn't be that big of a jump, and I wouldn't really recommend it, but you could upgrade to an i5. Or you can upgrade to the i7 6700K on the same socket. So, you know, that's a great upgrade path. You can upgrade from the Pentium to an i7. I don't think it's a 6700K. Um, I think it's actually the generation back. I don't remember exactly what socket type that's on. But you can upgrade to an i7 at some point, which is a processor that will last you a long time. I have a 2600K, which is a very ancient i7. That's about four or five years old and it's still kicking butt in video editing. So if you have learned anything from this video, I'll basically summarize at the end because this video is kind of just me ranting and rambling about what I believe is the best source for CPUs and what you should be looking for. The main thing I will do to summarize this is look for a CPU within 100 to $250. Look for one that's either a quad core that is, uh, clock speed really doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Clock speed does matter sometimes, but just look at reviews. Um, so yes, a quad core is recommended. A dual core, if you can get something with a great upgrade path, because a dual core can play games for now, but there's still gonna be some games that it's limited. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Uh, make sure it's good price and performance and make sure, make sure you don't bottleneck your other components. Don't pick up the Pentium G3258 if you're going to have a GTX Titan in your system. It's just not logical and you really should save your money and equally distribute the CPU and GPU the best you can. 
So thank you guys again for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one just as much as I enjoy talking about it. I really love sitting down in front of the camera and just rambling, even though I kind of jumble my words and that sort of stuff. But I really love just sitting here and talking about computer tech and basically getting my advice out to all of you because we get a lot of comments about specific hardware and specific builds. And I hope this kind of clears the air for you new PC builders out there. So if you haven't already, please leave a like, leave a comment below. I love any comments that we can get. Um, and also check out our Twitter. We're going to be doing a giveaway coming up soon. And I'm going to make sure we incorporate Twitter with that giveaway. So please go follow the Twitter. There's a link in the description below. Use all our referral links to G2A also. That helps us out a lot. I might try to get an Amazon referral link also, which will also help us too. So I'm going to look into getting that. And basically, thank you guys for all the support you've been doing for us recently. I'm kind of trapped in here on a snow a snow day and I really just want to sit back and make some content for you all we're trying to get back on track to being very regular with our videos so I appreciate you all sticking around and that's pretty much it so I hope you guys have a wonderful day and peace out <music>